I am. Good morning, everybody. Uh, good to be here with all of you. I'm sitting here in Centurion, um, and I see that there's lots of people in the room from all over the country, so good to be uh, speaking to you. One challenge is they always want to make me talk, a, uh, explain a lot of things, and there's not a lot of time. So I'm going to try and run through the slides uh, quickly this morning so that we stick within the time limits. Um, I apologize if I go through too quickly, but please feel free to ask any questions, anything that we might have skipped over. So a very quick overview of what we're going to what we're going to be discussing today. We're discussing vacuum breakers. The reason we're discussing the vacuum breakers, we had various questions on exactly where, how, how, why. Um, and it's been identified that there's some uh, conflicting requirements in the standards. Everybody wants to comply with the standards. And what do you do if the standard is in, in itself actually gives conflicting requirements? So we're going to try. That's that's the focus of what we're going to address. That's why um, I'm not going to talk about the purpose of the vacuum break. I think we all understand that. I'm going to give a quick rundown of how it works so we can understand um, the reasoning behind the, the the guidance we want to give at the end on, on how to install. So. Um, what does a vacuum breaker look like inside? It's basically a little component designed to let air in. So it's it's got a sealing disc and a spring that keeps everything closed, that keeps it sealed off so that the air from outside cannot push down the disc and get into the into the water system. Um, very basic and very simple uh, practice. So under normal conditions, while there's uh, pressure in the system, um, as it is used, uh, the combination of the spring pressure and the water pressure keeps the disc always uh, closed, sealed, um, no, in, no air entering because uh, we all know you, under, under normal operating conditions, you don't want air into the system. However, when something happens, whatever that is, that reduces the water pressure, that starts a suction on this thing, the air pressure from the outside will overpower the disc. It will enter past the, the the disc and go down into the system itself. Why is why is that important to note to understand? We need to quickly touch on a siphonage. Uh, <clears throat> we'll okay. We'll touch on the siphonage part now. Let's let's just first have a look at what is the standard. So the standard for vacuum breakers. It sends 198. It covers a, a, a number of components, but the one key aspect of a vacuum breaker that it covers, clause 5.3 of vacuum control valves, it says that the vacuum control valve shall start to open at a vacuum of less than 3 kPa. Okay, which means that anything uh, under 3 kPa, the vacuum breaker should, should start opening. How much is 3 kPa? 3 kPa is approximately the equivalent of 300 millimeter water, uh, the 300 millimeter water column. I'm sure you can already make the link to the standards reference to standpipes of 300 millimeter and so on. So take note, however, that this is not, it shall open at 3 kPa, anything up to 3 kPa. So we're aware of the fact that there are some vacuum breakers out there that um, are set to open at 0.3 kPa at anything in between. So all of that is fine. The whole purpose of this requirement is simply to say that that vacuum breaker should open as quick as possible and it should never be take more than 3 kPa for this thing to open. Again, why? We'll, we'll start understanding the significance of that slightly later. So what it basically means is there's two, the forces needs to be in balance. There's two components that keep this, this thing closed under normal conditions. As we say, it's a spring pressure, which we just use the, the letters SP for spring pressure and the water pressure, WP. Um, so when the combination of the spring pressure and the water pressure is greater than zero, then the system will, will stay, uh, stay closed. 
and that is well that's just about always imagine now what happens when the water when when there's no pressure on the water you do you close the close the valve uh, at, at the inlet of the system the water pressure is gone now it's only the spring pressure so the spring pressure is greater than zero kpa it will still keep it clean as soon as there's a suction a pull on that on that water line of just about three kpa this the the combination of spring pressure water pressure will be lower than zero and it will open up and let air into the system so very very simple it's also important to just have a quick look at siphonage remember how siphonage works if, if you have a and i'm pretty sure all of you understand the the image that's on the screen at the moment we know if you want to have the water run from the from the top flask to the bottom one all you got to do is get that process going and as as long as the the outlet on the right hand side is lower than the top level you see as we as is shown with the with the green arrows as long as that's the, there's that high difference that little tube can go up quite high and come down again it can go over a hill um it doesn't matter the water will keep flowing because the reference points are the are the the outlet and the inlet to this whole system that can keep it keep to the flow going which means and again have a look at the <clears throat> the thing on your system this is nothing different from the from the flask we've just shown say assume there's no there's no pressure on the system you've got a completely full system the inlet is higher than the outlet the, and you, you you get a flow going that will continue flowing all the way until until air gets into the system somewhere along the line while the vacuum break at the top while the spring pressure and the water pressure is less than zero um, it will it will remain closed so as we said the water pressure is zero the spring pressure will keep it closed no no air will get into the system which is not exactly desirable but um well I, if i say it's not desirable let's go to the next slide so i can explain what i mean what you want in a plumbing system is for water always never to never to run backwards um if there's water flowing where it should not be you want the air to enter into the system um to keep everything safe to keep the 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 geyser full of water um as we're not discussing the the purpose of the of the vacuum breaker again i trust you all understand it but what happens in this scenario as soon as the the pressure at the um at the vacuum breaker the suction is more than three kpa or up to three kpa it will open up it will suck air into the system and as you can say the see the geyser will be will remain safe full of water without any pressure um, working on, on that and that is actually all that the the next slide was was trying to explain you can see that uh, that doesn't matter what direction or what level that the, the outlet pipe is in different scenarios different stories um, it, it can be any difference but if everything sticks to the standard you need a minimum of 300 millimeters uh, of height between the outlet and the vacuum breaker in order to get the system to open up to get the vacuum breaker to open up and let air into the system as you see on this one as well in, uh, assume the the inlet is closed off completely there's no water flow all you need is that 300 millimeter between the outlet and the vacuum breaker um, to allow the vacuum breaker to open up um, if we quickly look at what the standard is let's get to the standard itself so i assume we're all familiar let me just switch to the next slide already okay i assume you're all familiar with with the standards and and where where the standards explain out the where vacuum breaker should be installed so in 10252 part 1 clause 6614 is one probably the most critical one the first the first part of this requirement explains when the vacuum breaker needs to be fitted um, and the bottom part explains how it needs to be fitted if we zoom into that clause a little bit just look at the key aspects that it explains it explains that there has to be a upstand or a standpipe as we re, as we refer it it uses the 300 millimeters says there's, there has to be a height of 300 millimeters at least 
minimum height of 300 millimeters and it makes a reference to the top of the water heater in other words this law says that the vacuum breaker must be at least 300 millimeters above the top of the water heater so this is fairly fairly good straightforward to understand this but then um, comes this this image um, this is out of Annex F of the same standard 102.5.2 part 1 where it gives some examples of how the system should be installed and you can see there that in the in this image that we that we use it shows the reference to the 300 millimeter from a different point it doesn't show it from the top of the water heater um, it shows it that the, the that the actual stand pipe must be 300 millimeters which is not what the text of the document says and normally within a standard if the text says something that will overrule whatever is in a uh, in a figure in a in a graphic image but they are supposed to to be the same ideally so as you can see on your screen at the moment the 300 millimeters on higher than the top of the water it is lower than what that image says i'll skip over this this one quickly as well i mean there's just another example out of 10254 that give a give a give a similar sketch or a similar explanation so the question now is it is clear i mean if you want to comply with the standard it's physically impossible to comply with both both the text and both with the figures so what is the correct way to do to to handle this at that stage when when you consider something like that we have to consider what is, what is the written text you have to consider the rest of the standard as well and consider the purpose of the requirement so this is why we have to go back and say what's the function of a of a um of a vacuum breaker and it's important to understand as well that if if we follow the letter of the text 100 percent and it detracts from the purpose then maybe you should follow something different but luckily it's not that difficult in in this standard the the guidance is and what's in the document is fairly clear also also worth noting looking at the rest of the text in the standard under clause 6.6.1 there's a note further down that just helps plumbers give some some guidance on what they do what not to do what's wrong this is a list of things that are wrong things that you should not happen and one of the items that's listed there is the fact that the vacuum breaker should never be lower than the top of the geyser which already gives some form of indication that it doesn't necessarily always have to be the 300 millimeters above there could be different scenarios I think it's also important to notice that if you look, if you do a rational design, a, a proper engineering flow design, there are different ways and and more uh, more ways and positioning that 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 can can be applied. Following the standard is a safe way of installing this, and that is why the standard is there as a set of rules that, when followed, at least you know it will be will be correct. So while the standard is in conflict with itself and both require 300 mil above the top and it requires a 300 millimeter stand pipe itself i think it's fair to fair to accept that either or can be accepted you we cannot fail one of the situations above the other one frankly both of them will function both of them will allow the vacuum breaker to open up for instance the image on your on this on the screen at the moment um it's a fairly straightforward if that is your the, the installation configuration as long as uh, on the on the one side the standpipe is more than 300 on the other side the standpipe is less than 300 the two vacuum breakers are at least 300 above the top of the geyser that is fine the second example where the where the vacuum breaker goes out all the way straight and the and the hot water tees off directly in a situation like that the actual stand pipe will be 300 millimeters and the uh, vacuum break itself oh, yeah, the vacuum break itself will be 300 mil above the top of the geyser so that will be that will will be acceptable we'll talk about manufacturers requirements just now another scenario that we need to consider and this is probably is, is one of the ones that's been highlighted recently that we need to pay attention on 
um, and take note that this is where the either or comes into play as well. On the left hand side, on the cold water side, the vacuum breaker is above the top of the geyser. Some geysers have got the outlet on the on the right hand side. And if the vacuum breaker is teed off with a 300 millimeter standpipe, the vacuum breaker itself will be less than 300 mil above the top of the geyser, but it's still above the top of the geyser. So this will also be regarded as compliant with, with the requirements of the standard. So we all know, and the question always comes up, what if, what if there's no space? What do, what do you do then? How do you handle that? So again, there's a, there is the requirement clause 5.7 that says vacuum control valves. If the vacuum breaker is 700 millimeters horizontally away from the geyser, it may be teed directly into the, into the pipe. You may install it without the standpipe. Um, in cases like this, it's always better to use the vacuum breaker that is set to open at a lower pressure, at the 0.3 kPa if possible. Uh, but the standard doesn't specify that. The standard just says if it's 700 mil away, it is fine that it, that it can be teed off directly of the pipe. Take note, however, that you have to adhere to the manufacturer's installation instructions and the local authority bylaws. The, the standard make explicit reference. It says, you may want to put it 700 mil away, but if the local authority or the manufacturer's installation instruction says it should, it should still be on a standpipe, you have to install it that way. A quick, oh, sorry, I'm running out of time. That's why I'm <laughs> rushing now, but we're almost done. Um, the one question, offset, uh, there's a lot of talk being about the offset. Can the vacuum breaker be above the, the geyser or does it have to be on an offset? The, the standard doesn't require it to be at the offset. However, most of the manufacturer's installation instructions requires it to be on an offset. The, and the standards are clear. You have to follow the manufacturer's installations. Therefore, it is always the safe way. Well, not always. I can't say it, you have to do it. You want to be cautious, you want to be safe. If you always put it offset from the geyser, then you will be safe and you will be following the manufacturer's instructions. Just quick examples. Remember, there's a photo, vacuum breaker, not a lot of space. Try to do something there. I mean, really do not install it horizontally. If it's installed horizontally, it will not work. It is definitely non compliant. And please don't. <laughs> we are aware there's other there's other issues in the images that we're showing. That's not what what this presentation is about. Another one, look at this uh, installation. On face value, it appeared to be a uh, a bit of a funny solution to to install the uh, the vacuum breaker. However, it is 300. It's more than 300 millimeters above the top of the geyser, um, and this is regarded as a compliant vacuum breaker installation similarly this one again it was it was debated uh, it on face value appears to be non-compliant appears to be just unconventional however it, it ticks the boxes it is 700 millimeters horizontally away um, and it complies yes if you look at manufacturers installation instructions they should have switched that one maybe to the other side so it's not above the geyser that's something that, that, that can be argued. But the principle remains that is a way that you can, can get the vacuum breaker in a, in a confined space and still be compliant. So a very quick summary of all of this. The basic, basic guidelines that you can consider whenever installing the vacuum breaker. The vacuum breaker must always be above the geyser, never ever lower than the geyser. Then the vacuum breaker must be either one of those three points, either on a 300 mil standpipe or 300 mil above the geyser, or if 700 millimeters away, you can tee off directly. And always follow the manufacturer's installation instructions. Now, re please remember, I, I didn't repeat every single thing in the standard. I didn't go through all the requirements. The standard is always the ultimate reference. Always go back there for the rest of the requirements relating to vacuum breakers. And that is the short and sweet what I had to say this morning. Um, I hope this made sense. And if there's any questions, I'd love to try and answer them for you now.
All right, hundred percent. Thanks so much, Herman. The first question I've got here for you uh, reads: Great presentation, but what is the difference between a vacuum breaker and an air release valve? Uh, I, 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 <laughs> they've got well. The one is to let air in, and the other one is to let air out. And there's different applications where they might be be needed. Air release valve is especially to prevent um, air locks where where there's pipes flowing over a how to say over a U formation. It's a longer longer topic, but it's two completely different items for different purposes. The one the air vacuum breaker especially uh, allows air in to prevent siphonage of a geyser. The air release valve uh, lets air out to prevent um, air locks. I hope that's a bit clearer. All right. The next question I've got for you is: When we talk about above the geyser, are we referring to the outer casing or to the actual boiler vessel part? Uh, outer casing. All right, the next question reads, if a vacuum breaker is placed at a 700 millimeter offset, it surely will not comply with a putance being over the trace. Um, I have a strong suspicion who said that, and thanks for the comment. Um, that, that was in my notes and I forgot to say it. Uh, no, that, that is absolutely correct. Remember the, the, the requirement that all the components must be above the Giza tray. Okay, so that is where, where where you need to ensure and you need to use your engineering uh, how to say your your own use logic if the if if the um whatever vacuum breaker is far apart make sure there is a tray that catch that you cannot you cannot have the vacuum breaker where it is not above the tray yes it might make for difficult plumbing installations but if you have a difficult difficult scenario look at all the different options available to you and then use your own logic to come up with a solution. Right, so the next question reads, vacuum break is installed with a 90 degree elbow will cause water to form a blockage between T and vacuum breaker, correct? Just repeat that again. So vacuum break installed with a 90 degree elbow will cause a water to form a blockage between the T and vacuum breaker. That's an interesting comment. I will have to I have to look at that. I'm not I, I can't I can't comment on that one. Uh, my initial reaction is I'm not sure that that is the, the, the case, we, but we can discuss that. All right, perfect. The next question here is does it make a difference if the vacuum breaker on the hot water is higher than the cold water? Uh, no, as long as both comply to the requirements, they, they don't have to be at exactly the same height. All right, the next one reads, can the VBs be directly above the outlet? And does that VB have to be over the tray? Uh, vacuum breaker must always be over the tray. Yes, definitely. Um, and the standard doesn't say that it may not be above the outlet. But a lot of the manufacturer's requirement says it may not be directly above the outlet. It must be on the on an offset, and you have to follow the manufacturer's installation instruction. Otherwise, it means non-compliance to the standard. Um, so, short answer: in most cases, yes, it may not be directly above the outlet, but where allowed by the manufacturer's installation instructions, you can do that. All right. The next question I've got reads. In the one projection, it was found that the hot vacuum breaker is piped directly above the hot outlet. It's always been stipulated that this is incorrect. Is it incorrect or not? Okay, I believe we've answered that question now a few times. It's 100%. The people that posed the questions didn't know the, that other people posed them the same. But the answer is it's all about the manufacturer's installation instructions. All right, the next question reads, um, if it is not over a tray, you can use devices such as a ceiling saver device that can catch water released and pipe out. Uh, the standard is actually explicit in saying that it has to be above the tray. 
All right. And then the last comment I have got here for this morning is use a um, leafy vacuum breaker, if not possible, over tray. So is there a yeah, special? Same. Is this... same question. Yeah, the same question. Vacuum breakers must be above the tray. Well spotted, guys. I'm glad to hear that you, you all picked up on that. That shows you understand what you're doing. All right, 100%. Then I'm going to have to end the session off here, Herman. Uh, would you like to say anything to end off? Well, it's always, always, uh, I always enjoy talking to you guys. I hope this was worth something to you. Um, and I hope you have a lot of fun the rest of the day. Bye. All right, perfect. Thanks so much, Herman, for joining us this morning. Thank you guys for taking the time out to sit with us. Uh, please do remember the survey on the way out. And again, guys, I have been sending that Business 101 link through the chat. If you guys do want it at a later point, please feel free to email us. You can email me at support at articulated.co.za and we will go ahead and get back to you with that registration link. Other than that, guys, I am going to go ahead and end the session off now. Please remember the survey on the way out and enjoy the rest of your week, guys. Thanks so much again and bye-bye.